I've just uh, completed the session uh, in the opening of the conference and uh, what I wanted to do more than anything in that opening session was to stimulate the thinking. So this was all about holding up a mirror to ourselves as a food industry, recognizing the fantastic achievements the food industry has made in the course of history in reality in promoting uh, well-being for mankind and there's no doubt that a fantastic contribution has been made. Uh, but at the same time, recognizing that there's a step change coming at us, whether it's driven through population increases, uh, climate change as a consequence of overconsumption in the world. But the industry has to now really step up to the plate and make the difference again. Yeah? Um, and, and what I wanted to do in the session was to um, show not only the, the harsh reality of the change that we need to make, but also to show some of the amazing examples a very positive change that's going on. Now, one of the questions I asked the audience was, how many of you are, would you call yourself techies? You know, technical people. And about a third of the audience raised a hand. Uh, another third of the audience was in sales and marketing of products. There was a lawyer in the room too, I remember noting. Um, the reason I asked the question was because a technical audience is, ha has al always runs the risk of overstating the importance of technology and understating the importance of consumer understanding. Because in the end, we don't sell any of our products unless somebody buys them. Hmm? And the, the end consumer is at the end of the value chain and that's where the consumption actually happens. So what I did was present some work that I'd done in the space of trend studies, so showing the way consumer attitudes are changing, consumer expectations are changing, and then present a number of really great examples, I think, from the world today that are happening out there that show how people can combine the agenda of, on the one hand, appealing to consumers' needs, and on the other hand, serving the sustainability agenda, the convenience agendas, the nutrition and health agendas that are so important. When I look at uh, industry uh, transformation, then um, again, I'll repeat that one point, and that is that industry will be, uh, you know, the transformation is not occupational therapy. <laughs> the, trans the transformation has to land somewhere, otherwise it doesn't actually affect change. I think industry is, is massively stepping up to the challenge, which is fantastic. And an event like this shows that very clearly. There's some great startup companies, great companies coming together. Uh, I, I think we can see that industry is starting to appreciate <clears throat> that there's a greater diversity of capability needed in order to deliver the products and services of the future than any single company can ever provide. In other words, it's when we come together and <clears throat> we mix and match capability to create valuable propositions for end consumers that we start to really make the difference. So I see very positive change. Uh, I see <laughs> the impact of digital <clears throat> and, and a kind of second and third wave of digital evolution starting now that people get beyond the initial cliche of digital and start to realize where it can create real value for mankind. You see supply chains changing as a consequence of digital. You see um, digital starting to contribute to the whole uh, personalized health agenda, nutrigenetic genomics, if I get the phrase right. Um, and there's a lot of um, enablement done by digital which I think is starting to become visible now and is going to start to make a very big difference. The other space, of course, that is a dramatic change for all of us is the way retailing is happening. Uh, and we should not forget that for one moment. When, when retail switches from being the classic buy your food product in the supermarket model to being a, an omni-channel experience, then that can bring with it the complete reconfiguration of supply chains. And it's my belief that uh, the role of food ingredient suppliers <clears throat> might actually change within those new supply chains and actually might bring them much closer to the end consumer than they currently are today. You know, what happens when there's a robot in your kitchen making food for you using the arms of a top chef through a subscription model to their cooking skills to take raw materials and ingredients and turn them into fantastic food? What happens there? And, and we might think of that as being very high end and very luxury, but what if that actually reduces waste? And what if one of the main drivers for that is actually sustainability? So we could have tailored diets, beautifully made, delicious, with convenience, and all still delivering into a sustainability agenda. Now, how does the food industry reconfigure itself to deliver that? 
uh, and who's going to go first? 